Let's talk about the Haber process. The Haber process is the industrial production of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gas. Nitrogen gas can easily be obtained from air. About 78% of air is composed of nitrogen gas. Hydrogen gas can be made from natural gas or methane. When methane reacts with steam, it can produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. So now when we put nitrogen and hydrogen gas in a reaction vessel under the right conditions, it can produce ammonia. And we're going to talk about those conditions in this video. Now this reaction is an exothermic reaction. It releases heat. The enthalpy is negative 92 kilojoules per mole. So when one mole of ammonia reacts with three moles of hydrogen gas to produce two moles of ammonia, 92 kilojoules of thermal energy will be released. Now, if we increase the temperature of this reaction, will it favor, will the reaction shift to the right or to the left? Will it favor the formation of the products or the formation of the reactants? Whenever you have an exothermic reaction, if you increase the temperature, the reaction is going to shift to the left. So this is going to decrease the yield of ammonia. Now, if you're a manufacturer of ammonia, you want to increase the yield, not decrease it. So high temperatures is not the best thing for this reaction. It doesn't favor the formation of ammonia. Decreasing the temperature, on the other hand, is going to drive the reaction to the right. It's going to increase the yield of ammonia. Now there's a problem if you decide to decrease the temperature because the rate of the reaction is temperature dependent. If you decrease the temperature, the reaction is going to proceed a lot slower, which is a problem. You want to get the greatest yield for this reaction, but you also want this reaction to occur at a fairly rapid rate. So lowering the temperature too much, it's going to slow down the reaction. And if you increase the temperature too much, it will decrease the yield of ammonia. So there is a sweet spot in which we can get the maximum yield of ammonia. And chemists, the temperature that they decide to use for this reaction is around 450 degrees Celsius. It's not too high, not too low, but it's just the right temperature to maximize the yield of ammonia. Now, another thing that is useful to increase the rate of the reaction in this process is the use of a catalyst. Now, this reaction uses an iron-based catalyst. Whenever you use a catalyst, the use of a catalyst will lower the activation energy, so allowing the reaction to proceed at a rapid rate but at a much lower temperature. So the addition of the catalyst will increase the rate of this chemical reaction. Now, a third thing that we can look at to favor the formation of ammonia is pressure. If we increase the pressure, what's going to happen? According to Le Chatelier's principle of chemical equilibrium, will the reaction shift to the right or to the left? Well, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system is going to try to undo the change that you imposed on it. So if you increase the pressure, it's going to try to do the opposite. It's going to try to decrease the pressure. In which direction must the reaction shift in order for the system to decrease the pressure? In other words, which side of the reaction has less moles of gas? The left side or the right side? The right side has two moles of gas. The left side has one plus three or four moles of gas. So in order for the system to decrease the pressure, it needs to shift to the right. As it shifts to the right, the pressure will go down. So increasing the pressure favors the formation of ammonia. It causes the reaction to shift to the right. 
if you were to decrease the pressure, it will shift to the left. So let's summarize what we learn here. By the way, the pressure that's used for this process is typically around 200 atm. The pressure of air at sea level is only 1 atm, 1 atmosphere. So it's 200 times the pressure at sea level. So to review, if we increase the temperature, we know that the rate of the reaction is going to increase, which is a good thing. However, because it's an exothermic reaction, the reaction will shift to the left. It will favor the formation of the reactants and not the formation of the products. That's a bad thing. Another thing also is if you increase the temperature, the costs of doing so will increase. So you want to produce ammonia at a low price. You don't want to inc unnecessarily increase the cost. So raising the temperature too much will make this process less profitable. If you decrease the temperature, the problem with that is the rate of the reaction is going to slow down. The good thing about this is that it's going to shift to the right, favoring the formation of ammonia. So the yield of ammonia is going to go up and the cost is going to go down. The problem is just if the temperature is too low, the reaction will be too slow. And one good thing to get around that is the use of a catalyst. When we introduce the iron-based catalyst, it will increase the rate of the reaction, which will compensate for the relatively low temperature that we have for this reaction. So that's how we could fix this problem. Now the last thing is increasing the pressure. As we increase the pressure, the reaction is going to shift to the right. So the yield of ammonia, that's going to go up. The problem with this, though, is that it's going to cost you more money to have the equipment to maintain the reaction at high pressure. Anytime you want to increase the temperature or increase the pressure of the reaction conditions, that's going to drive the cost up. So that's the downside of increasing the pressure. So the production of ammonia, it's favored at a moderate temperature, high pressure, and through the use of a catalyst. Those things will help increase the formation of this product. Now, how can we separate ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gas? Because in order to make this process useful, you need to have a way to separate ammonia from the reaction chamber. And you could take advantage of the differences in boiling point. The boiling point of nitrogen gas is negative 196. And for hydrogen gas is negative 252. But for ammonia, it's negative 33, which is still pretty cold. However, this is at sea level at a pressure of 1 atm. So if you increase the pressure, you could favor the formation of ammonia. You can condense it from a gaseous form to a liquid form. But the fact that ammonia has a much higher boiling point than nitrogen or hydrogen helps it to, it makes it more easier to separate it from the reaction chamber by taking advantage of the differences in boiling point between those substances. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good introduction into the Haber process. So thanks for watching.